Here it is. How spiritual. I need a purse to make me happy. Well, let me tell you this, okay? And so thank you for your little catty remark. Put your claws back in and go get a life, okay? Now let me explain something to you. I'm happy with or without a purse, okay? Has nothing to do with spirituality, okay? And this is the problem. People are hung up on externals. And this is why they get taken to the cleaners by fake gurus. Because it's got to look a certain way. It's got to talk a certain way. It's got to walk a certain way. Okay? So if you're wearing a robe, you're infinitely more spiritual, have more wisdom and knowledge than if you're dressed in contemporary clothes. Okay? Absolute nonsense. Absolute 100% nonsense. Now, this is not to say wearing a robe is not helpful when you're in the start of the path. Okay? It keeps your mind centered on your goals. But when you've completed do you need to have a bridge? Do you drag a bridge along with you? No. Kabir was a weaver. He completed and he did what? He, be, he stayed as a weaver. Nisargadatta was a householder. He completed. He continued selling beaties, cigarettes, okay? and continued to live as a householder. So this ideation that living here and somehow buying a purse makes you less spiritual is a bunch of hogwash, okay? It's a catty, catty comment, okay, by somebody without any understanding. Okay. Realization is of consciousness. It has nothing to do with where you live, what you wear. Okay? Nothing to do with it. So to sit there and make some assumption and put it out there that I have to have a person, it really is such a spiritual thing to do, okay? You know, uh, really, that's a, that's a sad statement to make. It's a catty statement, okay? Again, I don't need a purse to be happy, but why not enjoy it? I'm here living in this planet. I live in America. This is where I am living, okay? And I want people to understand that you can do the spiritual path no matter where you're at. And part of what I give and the way I give it, that people don't come and live in an isolated ashram, they do their path where they're at rather than having to go up in the Himalayas or having to go away somewhere. And then, you know, when things fall away, they have to be isolated in order to maintain their awareness. If you can't do it in the midst of your functional life, what good is it? Okay. So you don't understand anything about a tantric path. A tantric path means using what you have where you're at to progress. Okay? People need to enter a stillness of mind where they are at. Not by having to run away and go to some isolated place and put on special clothes in order to feel more spiritual about themselves and higher elevated, 
Oh, I, I'm more spiritual because I'm a vegetarian. I'm more spiritual because I wear robes. I'm more spiritual, you know, because of X, Y, Z. As a guru, my function is to break through people's ideologies, to break through where they're holding, to break through their misbegotten notions. And this is one of them, okay? This is one of them. So again, you know, if you want to sit there and make catty remarks and think you're so elevated because it's so smart because you said something like that, you know, I wish you had one second of the stillness of the mind here rather than a mind that's cranking on something catty to put out there, okay? Is it that you're jealous? Ask yourself why you had to put such a catty remark out there. What's behind it, okay? Ask yourself that, okay? Is it jealousy? Or is it you just haven't walked the spiritual path long enough to know that consciousness is consciousness no matter what you're wearing, no matter where you're living. If you are in a mind of sacredness, it is sacredness. Wherever you are at is sacred. Okay? And that's what I teach my students. Honesty, integrity, simplicity, transparency, okay? Again, this is done wherever you're at. If you have a Kundalini awakening, you are walking your path 24-7. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, there's no downtime. It's not, oh, I'm going to go do my practice for an hour a day. I'm going to get up and do a puja. Okay, and put it away and then go out and live my life. And then I'll come back. You know, this is not the, the spiritual circus. This is about learning to walk your path where you're at. So that when things deconstruct and things fall away and one enters moksha, you are in liberation wherever you are at. That you no longer, you don't have to go hide in the hills, hide in a cave, go to an ashram and live there Okay, so this is the reason that I never put together a big physical ashram because people have to do it where they live in order to get the benefit of it, in order to be able to continue to live in society. And part of your work is part of your practice. Okay. So I wanted to put that out there for people to understand. Okay. This is not a big whoop that I have something to say, look at me, look how special I am because I have it. It's nothing like that at all. Okay. So again, put your claws back in. Okay. Next time you want to take a dump, use your kitty litter box. Not, not my place, okay? My place is not your kitty litter box. Do it where it belongs, okay? So I'm going to leave this here. Love and light. Yes, people, I keep it real. I have never lied to my students, and they can tell you that. 
when I say the path is difficult, I mean it's difficult. Okay? No BS. When I say the mind is still, I mean it is still. When I say you come to the point where the thoughts end and you are in direct consciousness, that's exactly what is meant. Okay? No BS. Don't have time for BS. Okay? There's a difference between having something, getting it and enjoying it, and craving it. Okay? If you cannot live without it, if you are craving it and it is an addiction, that's a different thing. Okay? That's a totally different thing than having something and appreciating it for what it is. Okay? You want to make it seem like I'm so big into the big, huge thing. If I were the way you think that I am and your catty little remarks are trying to make it seem, then I would be out there buying designer outfits. But most of everything I wear comes from Walmart or it comes from a secondhand store. So again, put your claws back in. Okay? <laughs> People are amazing, amazing about the judgmentalism, okay, about the fact that I'm a spiritual teacher, okay, and I don't have to have the, um, you know, the phoniness, the phoniness, and this is again why people get taken to the cleaners by some of these ones that are supposed to be gurus, teachers, you know, light workers, that put on some fake false front, okay? A fake false front. You're never going to see that here. I don't play games. I don't have time for games, okay? So I'm going to leave this here. I want people to understand what's important is your internal life. Staying in the moment, questioning. And when you come to realization and your path is completed, okay, then you go into what's known as the leela, the play. Okay, now is my time for Leela, for play. I did 40 long years of 24-7 dedicated spiritual search until completion. And I'm still giving what I can give to aid others. Okay. So again, I have nothing to hide. It's all out in the open. Okay, it is what it is. And I'll leave it here. Okay. I hope you, you know, really wish that you would look up a little higher than thinking it's really intelligent to run around and making catty remarks, okay? Because whatever bag I carry does not change the consciousness, okay? Whereas the, the drama that you're thinking and running around with your mind on a hamster wheel is another story entirely. So again, I'm just going to say, look and see what caused that knee-jerk reaction and catty remark. And maybe you can get a little step 
further on your spiritual path. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, Love and Light. See you online.